Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And we're continuing our message series, World Under Attack. Today we'll finish up the message that we started last week. First, do no harm. With this message, our second part to that last message, it's called Prenum Non Nicore. As per our last message, Prenum Non Nicore is the cornerstone or the main principle of medicine that is taught to all medical students. It means, first, do no harm. It is part of a solemn oath that doctors and nurses and physicians take before entering practice. It reminds medical personnel to not administer cures or treatments to their patients that will cause more harm than good. And now today's message, Primum Non Nicore. Turn with me please to our scripture reading found in Proverb 1 verses 20 through 22. Let us find out if this is indeed being honored in the medical community, as far as we can tell. Our text today, again, is found in Proverbs 1, verses 20 through 22. Wisdom cries aloud in the street. In the markets, she raises her voice. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gate, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Wisdom cries aloud in the streets. Now, when you read the word streets, do not picture a three or four or five lane busy interstate highway with cars zooming by 70, 80 miles an hour, but rather picture a dirt road or a paved cobblestone street with pedestrians and maybe a few horses with riders and a horse drawn cart or two, some moving slowly along, sluggishly, others purposely moving along. Maybe even sparsely scattered groups of people huddled together and talking with each other, some whispering, others in hot debate, and every now and then a laugh will break out as the groups enjoy something humorous. Now imagine a woman with long flowing hair, dressed in white, a long white flowing dress with frills fluttering in the wind, gliding down that same cobbled street. Her name is Wisdom. She lifts her voice over the clatter and the noise, over the calls of the vendors that line the sides of the street who compete for the attention of potential patrons as they advertise their wares. As she goes along, she cries out, Oh, how long, oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? As wisdom glides along the crowded streets, she desperately warns the people. She cups her hands and yells, The return of Christ is at hand. Get yourselves ready and get your house in order, for now is the time of salvation. But no one even notices. No heads are turned. No eyes are lifted in her direction. No conversations are broken. Life goes on pretty much the same as always. There is no change. She continues her heroine. Prophecies foretold in scripture are coming to pass. Therefore, seek the Lord your God. Call on him while he is near. Do not hesitate. Do not wait, for his return is at hand. Therefore, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. But no one even noticed her as she glides on by. She changes her strategy. And she cries out, 
There's more and more scientists coming out stating that studies show that wireless and Bluetooth products are causing an increase in brain cancer. Radiation can cause health issues, but still, no one pays attention or even halfway listens. Well, the World Health Organization says that it's safe, so they go on their merry way. She calls that again. Eating GMO food is a potential health risk. But again, no one pays attention because billionaire software developers turned medical gurus say that it's not unhealthy. It's actually good for the planet. So they go on their merry way with no worries. Who do scientists think they are anyway? Do they think that they know more than the co-founder of one of the largest, if not the largest software company in the world? And what does it matter if that person doesn't have a degree, much less a medical degree? That is neither here nor there, the muse. We choose to listen to him. The wisdom screams at the top of her lungs. At least look into the matter. At least check out the facts. Do a little homework for yourself and do not rely on the opinions of those who stand to profit off of you and call it philanthropy. But again, no one pays attention or even looks up from their leisurely conversations. What a travesty. Elon Musk tweeted, or is it X? I don't know. But at any rate, his post on X went like this, and I quote, You watched The Hunger Games and sided with the resistance. You watched Star Wars and sided with the resistance. You watched The Matrix and sided with the resistance. You watched Divergent and sided with the resistance. You watched V for Vendetta and sided with the resistance. When it's fiction, you understand. Yet you refuse to see it when it's the reality you're living in. Wild. End of quote. He said, you get it when it's fiction, but you refuse to see when it's reality. Your reality. I agree. That is indeed wild and incomprehensible. It's a too far of a concept to understand. But the scriptures teach that if you will not see or believe the truth, then you will believe the lie. There are no other options. It's either or. It's one or the other. There is no middle ground. There is no sitting on the fence with this one. You either believe the truth or you believe the lie. Those are your options. Understand that a deception so strong and so powerful has already swept across the face of the earth and it has even duped the church, the very ones with the spirit of discernment. That deception has hoodwinked some Christians because they have closed their eyes and have refused to see. They're too caught up in identifying with people who look like them instead of identifying with people who look like Christ, like Jesus. You have to understand the world is not for you unless you are a part of it. Because the scripture says, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. That means that if you are a child of God, the world does not care about you. Why not? Because you are not a part of it. Or so James tells us. Therefore, if the world has embraced you, you had better check your Christianity. It is likely that you have made yourself an enemy to God. Now, when they say you will have nothing and you will be happy, now that includes you. Feel free to identify with that. 
I read a quote that is attributed to John D. Rockefeller. Now, whether he actually said it, I do not know. At least, I don't know for sure. But so said in the quote, so done in reality. And I ask you, who owns the pharmaceutical companies? And who controls the healthcare system? Therefore, who else would have the ability and the means to accomplish the goals stated in the quote that we're about to read? You decide. Here's the quote. We will keep their lives short and their minds weak while pretending to do the opposite. We will use our knowledge of science and technology in subtle ways so that they never see what is happening. We will use soft metals, aging accelerators, and sedatives in food and water as well as in the air. They will be covered in poisons wherever they turn. The soft metals will make them lose their minds. This quote said, we will keep their lives short and their minds weak. Anxiety and depression are two of the most common mental health disorders in the world, according to one web website I read. According to another website, sunshinefromdarkness.org, posted that anxiety and depression are on the rise. Holistichealthlibrary.com stated on their website, and I want to quote them, depression has become one of the prevalent problems in the world today and is becoming a major killer as well. It's staggering that 15% of depressed people will commit suicide and that statistic is so sad and so unnecessary. Depressive disorders affect approximately 18.8 .8 million American adults or about 9.5% of the U.S. population age 18 and older in any given year. This includes major depressive disorder, systemic disorder, and bipolar disorder, all of which can be effectively treated by properly trained professionals. 4% of preschoolers, over 1 million in number, are now clinically depressed and the rate of increase of depression among children is an astonishing 23%. 30% of women are depressed. End of quote. Seems to me that this is in line with that quote that's attributed to Mr. Rockefeller. How bizarre is that? The part about soft metals in the water, well, Fluoride, for one. Soft metals in our food. Sodium, for another. Our waters are laced. Our foods are laced with these poisons. Sodium are in high volumes in all the food that we order. Sodium is a soft metal that causes high blood pressure, cancer of the stomach, kidney stones, obesity, Alzheimer's disease, and many other health issues. Then soft metal in the air that Nicole talked about? Well, apparently the chemtrails are loaded with chemicals such as aluminum and mercury and others. Tell me, how are chemtrails necessary for good health? They're not. That's why the governor of Tennessee has banned chemtrails over the state of Tennessee. But back to the Rockefeller tributed quote. We will promise to find a cure from our many funds, and yet we will give them more poison. Chemical poisons will be absorbed through the skin of idiots who believe that certain hygiene and beauty products presented by great actors and musicians will bring eternal youth to their faces and bodies. And through their thirsty and hungry mouths, we will destroy their minds and systems of internal organs, reproduction. However, their children will be born as disabled and deformed, and we will hide this information. Again, 
so said, so done. The promise to give them a cure, but give them more poison is true. It's happening. The cures or the treatment cause just as much health issues as the disease itself. Some of the depression medicines, according to their own disclaimer, may cause suicidal thoughts. How absurd is that? Is it primum non necrone? First, do no harm? Whatever happened to that? Poisons are put in our food and stuff, and they call it additives and preservatives. Cancer causing dyes are put in the food that we serve our children just to enhance the color, to make it look pretty. Why? For what reason? Just to make it pretty. They can't do that in Europe. Why do they do it here in America? Children foot deformities are on the increase as well as other deformities. According to the CDC reports, the prevalence of autism in children has increased 1 in 44 in 2018 to 1 in 36 in 2020. That's less than two years, depending on when this survey was taken. But back to the quote. The poisons will be hidden in everything around them, in what they drink, eat, breathe and wear. We have to be ingenious, distributing the poisons because they can see far. We'll teach them that poisons are good. With funny pictures and musical tunes and TV, those who are looking for them will be helpful. We'll enroll them to push our poisons. That's talking about doctors, legal drug pushers. Every time my mom visits any doctor, it doesn't matter which doctor, their question is, do you need any refills? Back to the quote. They will see that our products are used in film and they will get used to them and will never know their true effect. When they give birth, we will inject poisons into the blood of their children and convince them that we are helping them. Wow, this is frighteningly close to what is going on. Within 24 hours of birth, newborns begin getting those things. By the time the average child reaches kindergarten, she or he will be pricked at least 50 times. Think about that alongside the stated goals that we just read. But back to the quote. We will start earlier when their mind are young. We will target their children with what children love most, sweets. When their teeth decay, we will fill them with metals and will kill their minds and steal their future. When their ability to learn has been affected, we have created drugs that will make them sicker and cause them other illnesses, for which we will create even more drugs. We will make them docile and weak before us, by our power. They will grow depressed, slow, and obese. And when they come to us for help, we will give them more poison." End of quote. This is exactly what is going on. How strange is that? We used to use the white kosher table salt, but because it's so refined, all of the goodness is taken out of it. So we switched to natural pink salt. My wife's blood pressure once felt really low, and she tried eating natural pink salt, but it didn't help her at all. So she took some of the kosher bleached white table salt, and her pressure immediately began to rise. I'm just saying what happened to her as information, not as a medical treat treatment or a medical remedy. Likewise, several years ago, I was feeling really sick, and I went to the doctor, the doctor diagnosed me with prehypertension. They gave me a prescription for pharmaceutical meds. I told my wife, I'm not taking that. I'm not taking those prescription drugs. I won't be a slave to pharmaceutical companies. 
please, can you find something for me? Because I'm not going to take that. So she did. She found a natural alternative and she gave it to me. Now my pressure is normal without pharmaceutical meds for life. My mother has been taking high blood pressure medicine for as long as I can remember. She has been tested for side effects and has her medicine changed every now and then. And she started to take other medicines for the damage that those medicines caused. Like it's said, like it's done. One of the side effects of her medicine is that it dries out her kidneys. And if her kidneys get too dry, then she will have to go on dialysis. It's just a side effect of her blood pressure medicine. No big deal. It seems to me that what's going on is exactly what, what that quote said that they would do. Never once is dietary or nutrition or exercise or any natural remedy is ever brought up when treatment is prescribed. It's only ever pharmaceutical treatment. At least that's my experience with the family members that I've personally accompanied to the oncologist or to the general practitioner or regular family doctor. In decades gone by, medical doctors had a holistic view of medicine and practiced homeopathy and treated their patients with natural medicines. All that changed in 1910 with the publishing of a book-length report called the Flexner Report. A report written by Abraham Flexner and published with the support of Carnegie Foundation. It described the state of medical education in the United States and Canada. He also provided a detailed description of medical schools that were in operation at the time. Flexner, Flexner apparently, did not have a medical degree himself, yet he was commissioned by John D. Rockefeller and Andrew Carnegie to visit medical schools and hospitals and to give his criticisms and recommendations to improve the medical education of the United States. It's mind-blowing. In the aftermath of the report, nearly half of the medical schools that he, he claimed to, how shall I say, fall short of the proposed standards either merged or were shut down altogether. Botanical therapies that had not been approved by the new medical standards were derided and natural cures mocked. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the world under attack. I want to encourage each one of you to begin to take a look at where you stand with Jesus. His return is at hand. One says, primum non decori, first do no harm, in a soft, smoothened voice that puts the hearers at ease and lulls the sluggard to sleep. While wisdom screams at the top of her voice, How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? There is none as blind as those who refuse to see. Even when the evidence stares them dead in the face, they still refuse to see or even take a look. But here's what the rest of the proverb says. 23 through 33. This is God himself speaking. If you turn at my reproof, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refuse to listen, have stretched out my hand and none has heeded. Because you have ignored my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when terror strikes you, when terror strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. 
because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel and despised all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and have their fill of their own devices. For the simple are killed by their turning away and the complacency of fools destroys them. But whoever listens to me will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. The Proverbs ends with God's promises that whoever listens to him will dwell secure and will be at ease and will, will be without dread of disaster. One thing we can always trust in, one thing we can always rest assured of is God is for us and not against us. God always has our best interests at heart. He always has our best interests in mind. He does not see dollar signs when he look at us, nor does he look at us in disgust. But as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. God will never ever deceive you, nor will he ever lie to you. We can fully trust him. He does not have a hidden agenda. God wants us to be obedient to his commands. He wants us to love him and to love others. Have you thought about that love in terms of eternity? Have you placed it as a high priority on your priority list? What I mean is, have you consciously sat down and considered where will I spend eternity? Because you will spend eternity in one place or the other place. Either you will spend eternity in paradise with Jesus where all your needs are supplied. Every tear will be wiped away where there will be no more hunger, no more thirst, no more heartaches because there will be no more sad goodbyes. Or you will have the alternative. That, that alternative is to spend eternity in a lake of fire, being tormented day and night, forever and ever, and in severe anguish with no chance of parole or ever getting out. That is the bottom line. Jesus is coming back real soon and his rewards are with him those who know Jesus as Lord and Savior will be saved those who love him and look forward to his return will be saved those who have rejected him or who have just plain waited too long they plan to one day but good intentions paved the way to hell or so the saying goes those people the rejectors, the waiters, the procrastinators, they will be sent to the lake of fire. Not because God wants them to go there, but because they chose to go there. It's your choice. If you want to spend eternity in paradise with all your needs met, now is your opportunity. Today is the day of salvation. Call on him while he is near. All you have to do is to repeat this prayer after me. All you got to do is to believe in your heart. So if you're ready to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and have all your sins forgiven, all your iniquities wiped away, all you got to do is to pray with me. And if you do pray this prayer, and if you mean it and do not turn back or do not turn away, you will be assured of an eternity with Jesus that lasts forever and ever and ever. So if you're ready to give your life to Jesus, repeat this prayer. Father, forgive me. I have sinned. I am the one in need of prayer. I am the one who have closed my eyes but now my eyes are open 
and I know I need a Savior. So save me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my iniquities. Cleanse me that I might live with you forever, that I may enjoy your eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful. He's just. He's loving. He's kind. He'll forgive you of all unrighteousness. He'll forgive all your sins. You are now a new creature in Christ. You are assured of eternity with our Lord. All you got to do is to continue in the fight. Continue in the race. Do not turn back. Do not turn aside. How do you do that? Get a Bible. Read the Bible. Learn who Jesus is. Learn what he expects of you. I urge you to memorize those scriptures that are meaningful, that will help you during times of temptation. Learn those. Memorize those. And when the devil comes against you, use the word of God against him. Find yourself a Bible-believing church who believes in the power, in the might of the Holy Spirit. Believe that God is holy and his, his, he expects holiness from us. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. When Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is you should be doing. He'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now enter in to the joy of the Lord. I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Jesus loves you. We love you. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.